The process of creating a Monroe CES suspension strut begins with receiving the raw materials to be used in manufacturing. When the raw material arrives at the manufacturing plant, it must be stored on the shelves to await the pertinent quality control processes and authorization for its use in the production chain. The process of manufacturing the bars for the rods begins with cutting the 6-meter bars in shear cut lines. This process intends to adjust the size of the initial bars to the definitive size of the shock absorber rods. After tempering the rod, we proceed to mechanize its pin on both ends, creating the threads for the upper lock nut and the piston valve. The first operation to create the casing is to place it and weld the base. This operation is done by automatic welding robots. After this operation, the collar of the electronic valve housing which will regulate the system is welded and we proceed to check that the dimensions of the assembly are appropriate according to the manufacturing specifications. In the leak checkpoint, we ensure that the welding is well done and that no defects are detected, as any pore or crack would result in an oil leak. To perform this test, the shock absorber is submerged in water. Pressurized air is introduced into the upper part and the part is visually inspected to ensure that no bubbles leave. All the components which enter in the CES assembly white room must be meticulously washed and dried to prevent any sign of dirt. All the sub-assemblies are placed around the rods, rod guide, shaft seal, spring and extension stop and the oil is added. Once this pre-assembly is done, it is placed on the pallet which will go to the rest of the stations. This starts the part of the inner sub-assembly mounting. The piston valve assembly is carried out in this machine. First, all the components which will form the piston sub-assembly, which fall from the different stations, are collected. The valve is mounted following its mounting program and is transferred to the rod where in the next step the nut is placed and is pre-screwed, to later proceed to its correct torque. In the next step, the inner tube undergoes suction to clean it of all possible impurities and the guide rod is pressure fixed to the inner tube. Once this is done, the base valve is placed and then pressure fixed. In this step of the process, the shock absorber is closed through the rotary head. The head lowers, turns and performs the closure. In the weigh station, the shock absorber is weighed, first empty, and later after it has been filled with oil. This is done to guarantee that all the shock absorbers have the precise amount of oil that they need. The next step in the process is placing the electronic valve in its final space within the casing. The valve is screwed in with its final torque through a screwdriver with torque and angle control.
If the shock absorber's stress test is satisfactory, an identifying tag is placed on it which will be its serial number. This number allows the technicians to know the manufacture date, which types of valves it has inside, and the stress values during its testing. If the stress test is satisfactory, the lid, if it has one, will be placed, and a seal is placed where the connector goes in order to seal it. This prevents dirt from entering and the connector is inserted, which later will be used to send and receive the information to the vehicle's electronic unit. In this process, the latest operation is done in a viewing control chamber where we ensure that the new unit is complete and has all the necessary external components for its correct use. After this test, the process has ended. Make sure you come back to Garage Guru's CSI to see how we explain more warranty claims. We are Garage Gurus. Join our community, follow us on social media. Thanks for watching this video. The video description contains all the relevant links. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and be notified when we post new content. Also, check out our Garage Gurus online course catalog.